Okay, we have for our guest speaker today, Pat Craft Bridges, was born and raised in Stanton, Burke, North Carolina, Wilson County, graduated from Wilson County Technical Institute, attended ECU for one year. Pat joined Road Three March March 2020, 2011, married to Mickey Bridges for 45 years. She had they have two children who are now 33 and 39 years 30, 33 and 39 years old. We have three, I think it's three grandchildren. Yeah, three, wait a minute, where is it? I'm lost, I'm sorry. She had three grandsons. Mickey is a retired educator and a coach, but still teach driver's ed. Pat retired from Johnson County Schools in September 2015. He was there for 31 years in Nash, Lenore, and Johnson County. He was an administrative assistant to the deputy superintendent and school secretary treasurer. Pat is an RLI graduate, Paul Harris fellow, past president, and this year uh, she's completing her third year as district cart chair. Pat's great experience as Rotarian has been her two years building latrines in the Dominican Republic. Rory is the great for many reasons, but as a Christian, it has enhanced her. I mean, it has enhanced her Christian. Wait a minute, let me get it together. I'm getting a little nervous. Rory is great for many reasons for her, but as a Christian, it has enhanced her chance to serve. And I present to you, Pat. Okay. <laughs> I really um, this connection is not good. I've only heard about what half of what she said, so I need to ask: Are y'all hearing me? Okay. Yes, we are. Okay. All right. Well, I'm just going to well, continue. Well, you're on. a bio on the newsletter, so I just said some things. They have a copy of the newsletter. Okay. All right. Well, um, I'm, I'm excited about doing CART programs. I'm just not really excited about Zoom. I'd rather be there to dance around and, and share, but I'm going to do the best I can. I will give you the information, and then I decided not to use PowerPoints and so forth because I did not want to take up the time to try to figure all that out. So, um, but I have a lot to say and I will start by kind of giving you my background on why I'm doing CART. Um, Coins for Alzheimer's um, Research Trust is important to me because my mom had Alzheimer's and living through that experience for about two and a half or three years was very mind blowing. <laughs> and, the, and, and, and you can relate to these other people who you know have been through it because when it's you and you're dealing with that, it just brings everything to light for you. So when I was asked um, three years ago, actually, I'm completing my third year, uh, to do this, it was a quick yes because I knew that I had a passion about wanting to help with um, with this, this cause. Um, so I, I will start by just saying that my mom died in 2016, and for the two or three years that, that my brother and I worked with her and visited her and shared with her, it was probably some of the hardest years of our lives, but also in some sense, those precious years. But I was, I have the great advantage of having this wonderful brother who was also there. And my brother actually lived in the same town with my mother. So he was often um, there when I was not. And then when I retired in 2015, I was able to be there more. But um, Kathy alluded to the fact earlier that we had said something and we kind of laughed about you know the situation with Alzheimer's and my brother and I laughed, and I did a lot of laughing we had to find the humor you know in what we were doing because my mom she was typically kind of a, a comical woman anyway and so when we watched as her mind was going you know, she would do really crazy things, of course. And one of them was um, she, um, when she would, when we would, before we left at night, she didn't, she couldn't comprehend the idea that we were going, that, that we had to get out of the door 
before, but she would stack like 40 pairs of shoes um, in front of the door so no, nobody could get her when we left. You know, we had to get the shoes out of the way to get out of the door. But, um, <laughs> you know, it, it got to be to the place where we were wondering, what is she thinking? And of course, after a while, we realized that the problem was, was really more than we were even thinking it was. But she had these really um, funny situations where one night my brother came out and she looked at him and she asked my brother why he didn't sleep with her anymore. And of course, you know, she was thinking that that was, you know, her husband. <laughs> and so, and she would do crazy things like ask me when he was coming home and he died 15 years ago. And probably one of the saddest experiences was one day we had taken her out to lunch and she asked me about her sister. And I, she said, where's Grace? And I said, do you mean Faye, which is Grace's daughter? And she said, oh, Grace, my sister. And I said, Mama, Aunt Gracie died 30 years ago. And when I told her that, she broke down and cried if that was the, as if that was the first time she had heard in, you know, ever. And she was very concerned that nobody told her, you know, that her sister had died. So that's kind of what we had to deal with. And so I advance on to say that as my brother and I were going through this experience, and, and, and you will all probably feel this way too, we looked at our mom and we looked at ourselves and we thought, what's going to happen to us? You know, I think that we all kind of put it, have to put it real personal in our lives and think, who's going to look after us when we get like this? If, you know, and we have two children but you just never know who's going to, you know, take care of you or, or, or whatever. So my brother and I really kind of jumped on the bag and, and started doing a little research. And then the CART program um, came, it kind of came in my lap. And I just wanted to tell y'all how important CART is and what I have seen in the, you know, even in the three years that I have been a part of this. Every year in, in um, um, May, um, I have been going to a district meeting, and it's more of a regional meeting because it's several people um, meet in Columbia, and we get together and we discuss how we can get CART to more, you know, more fundraisers, more things to do, and you know, raising more money. And I just want you to know that, I don't know if y'all know the whole CART story, but Rick, you know, Mr. Ackerman was the, um, was the first person back in um, 1995. He, he was thinking about his mother-in-law who he loved very much. And he wanted to do something for her because she had Alzheimer's and he had loved her for tears and when she died he thought what can I do to in memory of her so he came up with the idea about two o'clock one morning and he got to thinking about he was a Rotarian and he started thinking about how he knew that there was millions of dollars in pocket change that went through people's pockets every day so he came up with the idea of the cart book and so he decided and he presented to his Rotary Club that every Rotary meeting that people would empty their pockets of all their change and put it in the cart buckets and that would be a fundraiser every, every meeting. And so that was in 1995. And I want you to know that I'm just going to fast forward and kind of jump through the hoops here and tell you that last year, we presented one million dollars in grants to doc to doctors who are it's, it's the cutting edge research of Alzheimer's right now. And this cutting red um, the cutting edge research that I'm talking about are some of the finest doctors in, in anywhere. And they come. Um, I actually I have met the doctors for the last two years, and it's phenomenal. Now, I will share this with you. When the doctors get up and make their presentation about their research, none of us understand it. 
<laughs> because they're doctors and they they speak um, so intelligently about the things that they're, you know, for me, I would like for somebody just to say, eat blueberries every day and you won't get Alzheimer's. And that's not going to happen. They're, they're going to tell us all the different information that they gather and how they're working with mice and doing this and that. And there's a lot of little keywords that I've heard about, but I can't talk and talk intelligently about the research they're doing. But I do know that I have seen one of the first men or one of the first doctors that received um, the first grant back in 1996 or 97. And I think that year it was only $10,000, a $10,000 grant. And since then, we've given millions of dollars because we, we gave a million dollars last year. Year before that, I think it was $750,000. Um, and this year we're given another million dollars. And we are already um, with the contributions. This is the, the cart all over the world. We're already 150000 in the to the good. So we're making that much money um, already for the, because of the cart and what it's doing. Now, another thing you need to know is that there's, a, there's also another fund. And the most important thing y'all need to know that when you do gather your money for cart and, it, and it's in the buckets and you send it to the treasurer to have it de deposited, um, 100% of the money is what's donated to this cutting edge research. No money is taken out for anything else. The, the operating expenses are coming from the interest that's earned from that money that's been you know accumulated over time. And all of this is so interesting. And even in my little 30 minute talk here, I can't cover everything but you can go on your website and all of the things I'm telling you, you can, um, you can read more about it. And I really wish you would read about these doctors and what they're doing. Um, you know, I'm, as I said, I met some of them last year and, you know, had personal conversations with them and, you know, and I would do that little thing about, I mean, I'm, I'm really big about eating the, the, um, nutritious foods and making sure that my body is, um, you know, that I eat things that help my immune system. And I even found during all of these years that I have worked with CART on um, different programs on, I found a book called The Unbreakable Brain. And so I've done a lot of research and I, I did, I had, a, I had a, a little note here of some things that I could share with you. Um, let me see if I can find the, um, it says, you know, talk, talking about what our brains need, and it does talk about blueberries and walnuts and eggs and dark chocolate, and it's saying, um, you know, as we age that we should make sure to, to you know, have a lot of energy, go for a walk, and, and just stay active, and then um, developing new, new um, pathways for your brain. I know they always say that if you learn another language or play music, that that helps. And then weight training and dual task training, you know, just doing a lot of things to work your brain. Uh, engage in computerized cognitive training um, and social interaction. You'd be surprised how important that is. And even, even when my mom was in the memory care, you know, the social interaction was real important to help her to get through her day. And one of the things that, that I did not realize I used to get up every morning for 20 years. I got up at five o'clock to walk because I thought that was so important. But it also says that rest is just as important as exercise. And then um, challenging activity, playing and singing and doing all that. And I just want to put that out there just because as we all are, you know, we age every day. And you can start early by doing some of the things that can help you. And these doctors that are doing that um, information on the, on the research that they're doing, um, they're going to find things, you know, that can help us. But my brother and I realized, too, that as, a, as children of an Alzheimer's patient, um, you know, it, it could be inherited. And I know in one of the... Um, the, the um, doctors speaking today, 
he did talk about those that are have that part that's inherited that there's more of a, a um a chance that those um people would 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 get it earlier i'm already 66 so <laughs> they said it could start as early as 55 but you know th that is not even anything to be concerned about just cause you know you've got to do you know you live your life and you and, and i pray my mom did really didn't have any symptoms till she was about 85 or 84 but um but you know, when she was 87, she was full-fledged Alzheimer's, and but she did re still remember me and my brother. So all of those things, I think that um, that we need to know. And I really, really would like for y'all to go online and look at the CART information, uh, like the Facebook page, find it, and read what you can. And um, there's even a little video that you could look at. Um, and if I had shown that video tonight, it would have taken the whole time. So maybe at another program when y'all want wanting to um, to do another little excerpt on, on Alzheimer's, you can just show that little video. And um, but it, they're all available online, and you can find them. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share with you was um, the fact that I know that you're an e-club, and I know that you don't pass the bucket around but there is a, a new facility now that or a, a new portal that they have just i mean i found out about yesterday and it's a, a portal that you can go in and actually give um all uh, give for the for cart through that portal and i don't I, I i can't even tell you about all the information right now they they went through it last night and it looks pretty easy but you could actually do it individually or you could you know send the money to the treasury and they can but your your club will get credit for it and so that's a good thing you know so so we could show that e-club gave this amount of money for cart and they keep up with it. it's just it's it's within the the dbac um the back the dac db but it's not connected in the way it had to the way they explained it to me is you get in through that but it has nothing to do with the rotary card it's all card so that might be a little complicated too but i'll probably send more information out to all of the cart members i mean to all the rotary members so they can kind of know about that but another thing i know when i first got on um doris mentioned did you bring a pie <laughs> and so um for me, um, when I became the cart chair, I was getting a little creative on how I could um, make money for our club. And so since I love to bake and making a pie is no big, big deal for me, I decided to start making pies and taking them to the club meetings. And when I started auctioning them off and they knew it was for cart, you know, I think the first few pies I sold were like 75. I think I sold one maybe for 85 or 100. And most of them kind of went maybe for 30 or 40 or 50. But then after that, I went to a, a um, rotary assembly at Cary. Um, and so I had, I had taken a pie and I got Lee Hudson to help me auction that pie off. And that pie, we did $250. And so when I came back to my meeting, I said, okay, guys, you know, y'all got to do better because the pie that I sold on Saturday was $250. So at that point, I kind of made a deal with my Rotary and said, if y'all buy a pie for $250, you will get pies anytime you want them. So I had two or three members who have kind of um, did that. And so I made them a pie anytime they want but we, we still made $1,000 for our club on the pie that I made for that. So, um, and, I've, and I've gone around to some of the different clubs that I have um, spoke at and taken a pie and let them auction it off for their club. So you just need to get creative. And in your situation, being creative um, might mean coming up with some other kind of plan and doing it virtually, but um, giving, giving to car is very, very important and it's such for a good cause because just like when I, I said that my brother and I looked at each other when my mother and mother was going through this and we thought, what about us? You know, what, what, what about our future? 
And if you look at the um, information on Alzheimer's now and how many people in the future are going to get it, it's really kind of disheartening and knowing that if we don't do the research and do fun and, and don't fund CART, that, um, you know, it, it will be harder for us to find that cure that we need. So that's kind of my little spiel, but I would love if anyone in would like to ask a Pat, can you hear us? You froze up. Yes, uh -huh. and it says my internet is connection is unstable, but maybe I'll stay for a few. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful presentation, and thank you for sharing your, your story with your mom. Um, as a group, when we were, we meet twice a month virtually, but then we also have um, a social where we actually get together in person and we do have the cart bucket at, at our socials. So, and some of our okay, projects. Yeah, so um, even though we meet virtually, we're able to do that, but thank you for sharing with us other ways that we can also be creative, um, you know, for donations. So, and, and Pat, if you could also share, and you can send me an email and I'll should be glad to share it with the group. Um, you mentioned uh, a book that you found, um, if you could share the title, if you don't mind, so okay. that would be anyone that would like to um, read a little bit more, uh, that would be great. And also, um, if you had the, uh, you mentioned a video as well, if you could share that link with us, and okay. we'd, we'd be glad to share it with our club. So, if okay. everyone you would, would love, You would love that, that video, because Charlene, I think it's her, her family, and I've met her at the, um, in Columbia, but it's a very, it's a very interesting story, and it's a real life story, and it kind of brings you to, to life with what it's all about, kind of like my story, but it's, you know, it, you see the people. We'd so, love that, we'd love to have that link for the video, if you okay. um, don't mind sharing that. If okay. everyone would like to unmute and ask Pat questions. You just need to unmute Lonnie. Oh, there you go, Gene. Uh, yes, Pat. That was I. I really enjoyed. Um, my old uh, club used to do cart every meeting, and I got kind of used to it. And I'm kind of sorry we don't do as much as as we can here. But uh, how long had your mom had the Alzheimer's before she passed? Well, she was a very spunky, spry little tiny lady. And, and I, I actually have pictures, and I was going to um, do the picture of my mom and um, Mr. Ackerman's mom, too, or mother-in-law, because she was, they were beautiful ladies. But she started showing signs when she was probably about 84. But those were, they were kind of a normal, you know, older person attitude. But by the time she got to be 86, we, we finally realized that we we had to put her in a memory care unit. And, you know, I, I, you never know what to do, but one of the things that we did, was we, we found a drug that we could use to help her slow down the process. However, when she took the drug, she went crazy. I mean, she was trying to climb a 15 foot fence <laughs> and we thought we're not giving her that drug again. So you never know what to do, but we just decided to play it out, just give her love and do what we could do to, to make her comfortable. So she was later on in her year. She had a great life and was just a beautiful lady. So we have lots of good memories. Anyone else with questions for Pat? Anyone with a question? Yeah, I don't. I don't have a question, but uh, one of my buddies, uh, his mother, actually has Alzheimer's, and he would he would come back and he'd be joking. He said, "Every day is a good day for mom. It's just me when she asks me the same thing about fifty times." Um, and he would <laughs> just, just come back and he'd laugh, and you know, it's, uh, just to, I guess sometimes he would say laugh to keep from crying. But uh, it was really interesting because I think his mom. His dad was in the early stages, and then his mom followed shortly after that. So, 
to break up all the situations. Well, like that. One of the things that I have that that I probably should have touched on, but you know, once you go through this with people that you love, you learn to laugh. Kathy and I talked about that earlier, but you also learn not to argue with them because they don't know. And, you know, I, I heard a great presentation at a car, I mean, at a um, Rotary District meeting years before I did CART, and it was a, I forgot the speaker's name, but he shared about, they were all sitting around at the um, Thanksgiving table and something came up about his birthday. And his mom said, that's not your birthday. You know, he had stated when his birthday was. And she said, I know when your birthday is. But, and she was wrong and he was right. But, you know, sometimes you just don't need to argue about those things because it's not that important. And you, when you realize that, you know, you, you sometimes have to just let them be right. Because I noticed that, that mom would get kind of agitated if, um, if things got, you know, kind of controversial. So we just let it go, you know, just let it go. <laughs> so, uh, but there's just, I, I think for the, I think for the caregivers, I mean, you know, I know I sound like I'm whining a little bit, but I think for the caregivers, learning how to deal with the situation is a biggie. I think that you really need to learn not to argue. You need to learn how to, to cope. My mom wanted to go home with me every time I went. You know, and it was hard for me to explain to her that she could not leave that facility. And the only thing that I found that would work is, is, I mean, I had retired, but I told her I had to go back to work. And she understood that when I told her, and she thought I had to look after my little children, which were grown. So you just learn how to, what to say to keep them from getting agitated with you. And she wanted to go look after her mother who had also died, you know, many years ago. So their brains get scrambled and you just have to learn how to go with it. Mm hmm you're, Pat, you're exactly right. And the humor really gets you through. I, I, think, right. I think for the caregiver, you know, more to, you know, than just, you know, not to take everything so seriously. Um, right. Because it's just learning to cope with everything. And there, there, there's good moments, you know, there's good parts of the day and, or, you know, so you just have to cherish those and move on. But we yeah, used to do the same true. thing and I know, with especially with my grandmother it, and and I see it a little bit with my mother-in-law now um, she just turned 80 um, but <laughs> it's been a while but a lot of times and both of them this similar trait and Pat you'll probably appreciate this story but it everything became well you know you remember um, you know as to what day it is and because a lot of the when you're in a facility they'll ask similar questions like you know, Margaret, do you know what day it is? Uh, you know, and stuff like that. Well, yes, I do. <laughs> okay, well, what day is it? Well, you know, <laughs> you know, it's one of those because they're using coping mechanisms and then you have that back and forth until finally it's like, no, I really don't know what day it is. But there's yeah. a lot of people, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I catch myself, I have no idea some days what day it is. What day is it? Is it Tuesday? Is it Wednesday? <laughs> it goes into the next. But for some people, they live that, you know, I mean, and that's it's a tough thing you just have to roll with it well my brother is two years older than I am and my mother has always been the, the organized one in our family I, I'm pretty organized but not like my mom she always kept an immaculate house everything organized and she would call my brother and I scatterbrain she said y'all are so scatterbrain because when, when I went to see her I'd always leave something you know so flash forward to to year later and um and my brother and I still realized that we were more scatterbrained than she was when she had Alzheimer's mm -hmm. so we we learned how to laugh about that too but but it, it was it was kind of a an interesting situation to be able to laugh about all that and, mm -hmm. and see but she um uh, and we knew that when when mama was repeating herself and looking for words you know that that's when that's when we knew something was wrong because and when she got very unorganized and didn't have things the way they used to be. So there were a lot of little telltale signs there a couple oh. years before she asked. So. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. So um, if there's no further questions, I'd like to um, share my screen. Yeah. Hey, Kath Kathy, oh. sorry. I always yeah. catch you when you do that. But That's okay, I, I got a question for Pat. So Pat, 
when, you, when you present to the doctors, do they ever say they anticipate a, do they know when they might have a cure or do they, can they, I mean, what, what do they tell you as far as a cure goes? Um, never going to happen? Uh, how close are they? It's really interesting because these doctors are so excited about what they're doing. And every year when I go to the, these meetings, it's almost like this is, you know, this is it. And they can give examples and, and you actually can go online and, um, and hear, hear what the doctors are saying. One thing I thought was interesting tonight is the, um, I, I did listen to some, of the two of the doctors before I had to come on with y'all, but one of the doctors had received a $250,000 grant and he was so excited about that grant because six months ago they had discovered something that this money was going to help, but even to piggyback on that, with getting that $250,000 that Hart was giving them, it was enabling him or them to get another grant that they that they needed to carry on with the process. So to answer your question, I, I don't really know, but I do see the excitement in what they're doing, their passion for wanting to do it. And, and one year I remember the emotion of one of the, the men that was sharing or one of the doctors that was sharing because it was so close to his heart. You know, he actually choked up and talked about some of his patients and all. So I can't answer your question, but I have hope. And every time I, I go watch these doctors and get them and, and share or, or hear them share about their research and then their stories. So I think that's exciting. And I think that that's one reason why we should carry on with CART. And it's uh, it's really getting big and bigger. And I think it's a good thing. It's, it makes me think about polio and how um, car, I mean, how rotor, Rotarians have pretty much eradicated polio. And I'm thinking, wouldn't that be nice if CART could carry on with the next <laughs> phase of curing something? But don't know that, but it, it's hopeful. Okay. That's wonderful. Anyone else have a question before I share my screen? All right, then I'm going to share my screen. And Pat, on behalf of the Rotary E-Club of District 7710, we'd like to thank you for joining us this evening. And we would also like to present to you a certificate of appreciation granted um, to Pat Bridgers for imparting valuable insights and inspiration this evening as our guest speaker, May 5th, 2020. So thank you so much, Pat. We loved hearing your story and um, about, all about CART. I'd love uh, it in, I'm sorry, go ahead, Pat. I was gonna say, if you uh, invite me to a, a social, sometimes I'll take a pie. All right, <laughs> we'll bring our money. We'll yeah, bring yeah. our money. Um, so uh, as you all know from the beginning of, the, um, of our meeting, May is Rotary Youth Service Month, so I'd love to ask um, our Youth Service Program Chair, Jean Perry, to honor us with the four-way test this evening. Jean, would you honor us? More than happy. Um, the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. The first, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build good, goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thanks, Jean. Really appreciate that. That is the official recording of the Rotary E-Club meeting for May 5th, 2020. I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>